Okay. So that's physics class, and today's topic will be about um nuclear physics and quantum physics. So please ask question, preferably using your mic throughout the lesson. Okay. And for those who cannot join, you can watch the recorded version. Okay. So if you have any problem, just ask. Hopefully everything is clear on the whiteboard. Okay. So prepare your textbook, everything, and yeah. Uh, okay, before we start, I'll just send the Google link so that you can go form link so that you can just uh, fill in your attendance and also give some feedback. Lah. Okay. Copy. So today, let's use black marker for today. Okay, so today we are going to um, study nuclear physics for the uh, sixth chapter and the seventh chapter will be quantum physics. So, can you all tell me what do you understand of nuclear? When we talk about nuclear, what comes to your mind? Explode, yes. Explosion, what else? Today, attendance is also quite good. I'm happy to see like uh, there's around mm, maybe more than five, maybe nine of you. What, do you, what comes to mind when you think of nuclear? You need to say explode the others. You can on your mic, by the way. It will be better. No one? Anything la, that comes to your mind? Bomb. It's okay. Bomb. Everyone bomb, bomb. <laughs> okay. And nuclear actually has a lot of users beside bomb. Okay. So basically, nuclear physics, the most important thing we are going to learn about nuclear physics is radiation. We are going to look at the aspect of radiation. So radiation, there are three types of radioactive decay or radioactive particles that will emit, which is alpha particle, beta particle, and gamma ray. Okay, now who can tell me alpha particle? What is alpha particle? What particle is that? Alpha particle. Okay. So we have alpha particles. What type of particle is that? What element or something? Weak penetration, yes. Good, okay, later I'll ask about the penetration thing. Anyone wants to guess? Alpha particle. What element is it? No one? Okay, alpha particle is helium. Right? Alpha particle is helium atom. Now, helium atom, its nucleon number is 4, proton number is 2, okay? In terms of penetration, helium particle cannot pass through paper, okay? Paper, very thin paper. In fact, I think I should draw one line. Paper is very thin. Paper. It will be blocked by paper, okay? Now, second, beta particle. Who can tell me what is beta particle? Electron, good. Okay, beta particle is electrons. Or we can say high-speed electrons, something like that. Higher velocity electrons and it can penetrate through paper but it cannot penetrate the aluminium sheet. The third one is gamma ray. So gamma ray is Basically, 
radioactive ray go fission can go, go through aluminium but it cannot go through lead block okay is this, this clear so far this is just, just the basic, basic lah. Is this clear? More people here, so that means you have more response compared to yesterday. Yes, clear. Anyone not clear? Then must ask. Huh? Okay. Now we look at the textbook. So, in physics, we'll be learning about how does it decay. Okay. So, for example, you see, for alpha particle, the parent nucleus, AZ, when it decays into a daughter nucleus, because of the helium particle, look at the helium atom. It has four nucleon and two protons. So it, when it decays, the daughter nucleus, you have to minus four for the nucleon, minus two for the proton. Okay, let me wrap it. So alpha particle, let's say you have an element X, A, and then you have Z here. So when it decays into your daughter nucleus, Y, your A will minus 4, your Z will minus 2, and then you'll produce the alpha particle, which is helium, 4, 2. So this will be the alpha particle. Okay? Now, how about beta? Okay? Beta will produce one nucleus, but the nucleus will further, de uh, not nucleus, sorry, neutron, and the neutron will further decay, decay into one proton and one electron. Okay, so for beta particle, it's actually one neutron. Now you see, neutron is not a proton, so that's why it's, it has one nucleon because it's in the nucleus. It will further decay into one proton and one electron. So you see it's balanced. One, zero, one minus one is zero. Okay. So beta, again, using this A, Z, X, decay into, when it decays into a daughter nucleus, because of the electron here, you see it's zero. So here it maintains the A, but the Z will plus one. And then you release one electron. Sorry. One electron. Because this is a linear equation. Matter cannot be destroyed or created. So when it decays, A, 0, Z equals to Z plus 1 minus 1. So it's the same thing. Do you understand for beta particle? Yeah, can I? Okay, then gamma is very easy actually. Gamma ray is just ray. There's no changes to the electron. It just or anything, it just becomes very stable. So A is at X, you release the gamma ray, so it's still the same thing. A is at Y, and then you release the gamma ray. Lah. Okay, so this is very easy. So basically, this also applies the concept of like linear equation, something like that. So now, questions they will ask you, like, for example, hold on, lah. I don't know whether this is. Uh, um, chapters. Okay. They give you, okay, thorium-232, thorium-232, so the total number for thorium is 90, decays to become plumbum-208. Plumbum proton number is 82, plumbum. Okay, now they're asking you, how many alpha and beta particles are emitted during the decaying process? So you know, alpha particle, what will it release? Alpha particle and also one beta particle. What does it release for alpha? Alpha particle is helium atom, right? So what does it release? Helium, okay. So nucleon number for helium? Four proton number for helium. Two. Okay. How about um, beta? Zero, negative one. Good, right? Electron. So now we want to find out how many alpha and how many beta. 
So we will just put um, x and y in front eh, as they are as our variable. So x number of helium atom, which is x alpha particles, and y, okay, y electron. So now we have formed this. You form a simultaneous linear equation. Look at the nu nuclear number first, 232. 232 equals to 208 plus 4x plus 0y. Okay, so this is 0, 232 equals 208 plus 4x equation 1. Understand? The second equation, look at the, new, the proton number 90 equals to 82 plus 2x plus negative 1y. So 90 equals to 82 plus 2x minus y equation 2. Okay? Got it? Is everyone clear for this? Okay? Okay, okay. Uh. okay. so you look at this equation and do understand why, so you can find the x first. So 232 minus 208, 4x equals to upper. 232 minus 208. 232 minus 208. 24. So x you know is 6. Lah. Once you get the x is 6, you substitute back here for equation 2. 90 equals to 82 plus 2. 6 minus y. 90 equals to 82 plus 12 minus y, 90 equals to uh, 94 minus y. So negative 4 equals to negative 1, y equals to 4. So now we know it will emit 6 alpha particles. y is a y, 4 beta particles. Okay, understand? So this is how you solve this type of question. They give you the parent nucleus, daughter nucleus, ask you how many alpha and beta particles. You just write down the full equation and then you write down simultaneous and you solve it. Okay? Yeah, working is always the best. Unless paper one, then maybe you can just uh, scribble through everything. But if paper two comes out this question, then you have to write that. Your simultaneous linear equation, how you get your x, how you get your y. Okay? Okay, Anna? Yep. Okay, ah. Okay, I'll wrap off, ah. Okay. So now, we move on to the next subtopic. So half-life, okay, so you know decay, that means it will decay to its half-life. So what does it mean half-life? T half is the time taken for a sample of radioactive nuclear to decay to half of its initial number. For example, you see, look at this example, ooh, very complicated, but actually you don't have to memorize this. Huh? You just need to know, you see, uranium-238, it decays to thorium-234 by emitting alpha particles, okay? So this is half ready, lah. Okay, and it takes 4.5 times 10 to the power of like 10 to the power of 9 years, very long. Okay, and then it emits beta again to form this and then this one all the way until it forms a stable uh, nucleus, which is uh, let 206. Lah. Okay, so by using this concept, we can estimate how much uh, or how many years has this. Uh, artifact or whatever um, been buried by calculating the radiation that is emitted lah. okay so you see all at first everything is uranium uranium isotope but after that it decay to form lead 206 lah. then we can estimate by counting all this together which takes days lah, long time okay so normally in exam they will give you a decay curve all right over here Okay, before I go to the decay curve, I think you all also understand what is half-life, right? It's actually very easy, you need. So basically from N0, 
after half life it will become um, the half of its initial number and then become one quarter one over eight one over uh, 16 one over 32 like that lah. okay so basically it will decrease into half into half into half but remember it will never disappear because matter you cannot uh, this in, you cannot create or destroy matter so it will only decrease 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 it's like sum to infinity lah. it will never ever disappear lah. it will only decrease to a very very small amount so look at the curve so to determine the half-life let's say here is n0 when it's half ready you look at the time this is a half-life lah. and then another half-life another half-life so if it's a higher decay rate it takes a very short time to decrease to half lower decay rate takes a long time okay so um let me see okay hmm okay let me draw a graph activity okay basically uh this one is measured in uh Curie or Becquerel, yeah, by the way, for activity. So let's say this is, okay, N0. Okay, not like that. N0 is here. N0 over 2. N0 over 4. And then, okay, 0. Uh, how long? Uh? Hmm. Okay, let's just do 30 minutes. 30 minutes, uh, 60 minutes, 90 minutes. Okay, so let's say they give you a curve like this. Uh, okay, somewhere like, like this. Lah. For example, lah. and 0 over 8. And then this one is here. This one is here. This one is here. So, what is the half-life of this um, nucleus? What is the half-life of this nucleus? 30 minutes, okay? Shen Qing said 30 minutes, the others? What do you think? Same answer. Good. Correct. 30 minutes. Let's say another particle using the same graph. Decays. Uh, ah, okay. Decays like this. So, which one has a higher decay rate? The blue or the black? Yes, the blue because... You see, less than 30 minutes is already decreased to half-life, uh, half of its initial number. And then, after 30 minutes, it's already one quarter. So that means this has a higher decay rate, lah. it's more unstable. It keeps emitting radioactive particles. You understand? This is very easy for me. Hmm? Okay. Okay. So, the next subtopic, after the half-life is basically the calculation. Nah. So half-life, you can use a lot of methods. You can use the formula, okay? 1 over 2 to the power of n, and then you times the uh, the whatever initial number here, lah, the n0 here. Or you can also draw a very simple uh, timeline over here. 100% decay to 50%. 1 half-life is 10 days. Another 25%, so 10 days, so total 20 days, ah. okay? So I think half-life should be easy lah, for all of you. Is that okay? Okay, okay good. good. Now, now the interesting, interesting parts, parts uh, comes, comes up in the next subtopic where you have to calculate the nuclear energy already. Okay, so basically for nuclear energy, by admitting all these particles, you will also release nuclear energy. It's also known as atomic energy released during nuclear reactions, such as radioactive decay, nuclear fission, and nuclear fusion. Okay, now let's look. What are the two uh, types of uh, this nuclear reaction? Okay. 
Yes. Nuclear fission. A nuclear fusion. Now, by the name, you also understand already. What is fission? Fission. Fissing up. So, big to small. Right? Right? Something big. Something big. out already, 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 already becomes become small. Nuclear fusion. Small. Many small particles join to form a bigger particle. Fuse together. And so this is nuclear fusion and that is nuclear fission. Okay? So look, nuclear fission is when a nuclear reaction, okay, when a heavy nucleus splits into two or more like the nuclear while releasing a large amount of energy. So uranium-235 bombarded by a neutron, okay, it will produce an unstable nucleus, okay, and then it will fission. It will produce two small daughter nuclei and also three neutron and large energy. So basically, one I bomb one okay. Uh, what is it? What is it called? The the uh, uh, parent nuclei. I will form an unstable nucleus, and then I release. Two smaller nuclei with three neutron and energy. So this is where you have to calculate the amount of energy release. Understand? Unstable fission to release two small nuclei, three neutron energy. Is that understand? understand? Is that around clear nuclear, nuclear fission? fission? Okay, good. And uh, okay, before we go to fusion, we jump to uh, we jump to where is it? Uh? Ah, chain reaction. So, what happens when this neutron release? This, this neutron, neutron will go and bombard other. Uh? So, you see from the diagram here, one neutron. Okay, one neutron, bombard, one, one particle, release another, another three. three. Okay, release three more neutrons. And then, and then the, new, the neutron. neutron. Okay, so apparently I lost my connection. Where did I stop? Huh? Okay, uh, where, where did I stop? stop? Okay, okay, sure, bye, bye. Alia. Bombard, okay, okay bombard. bombard. So if the three neutrons fix, yeah, yeah, that means it will confirm release three neutron one right? during nuclear fusion. Okay, so one neutron bombard the paranuclear, three more neutron bombard three at the paranuclear, release three more nine. Then so one become three, become nine, become twenty seven. So it's continuous lah. Understand? Okay, yeah. Okay, then we go back to fusion. So how about fusion? Okay, fusion is the opposite. Dua campur bersama, they can produce um, one big uh, paranuclear. Huh? So for example, here in the uh, in the example stated here. So deuterium, deuterium, and then thorium. These are isotopes of hydrogen. Huh? You okay? So all this tambah bersama combine together to form a large nucleus, which is high helium. Sorry, helium. And then what you release? You release one neutron and also energy. So this is where the energy you have to calculate. Understand? So fission, from big one, you release a small one and neutrons. Fusion, two small ones, join together, fuse together, form a big one. And then you release neutron and energy. Can you understand? Okay? 
So now, if we understand, then we have to know what is mass effect. So you see, the fission here, one big, uh, one big paranuclei, it will be fish to become small dot nuclei. And then you release the energy. Where does the energy come from? Because matter cannot be destroyed, cannot be created. So the energy will be the mass defect. Understand? Maybe, Maybe like, like for, for example, example like, like, just for your uh, own understanding, let's say here is 2 kg. Here is 0 0.5. Here is like, maybe 1. So here is 1.5 kg. Here is 2 kg. But where the 0 0.5 kg go? The 0 0.5 kg will become the energy. Lah. So this is mass defect in simple terms. Lah. Do you understand? Okay. So the mass of this nucleus will be measured in amul, atomic mass unit, lah, amul, lah, okay? They will give you ready, so you don't have to memorize, no worries. You just plus together before the fission, and then you plus together the total mass after the fission, including the neutron. And then you see, the total mass after the fission is less than the total mass before the fission. So the mass defect or the mass loss will be the energy, lah. 0.818606 mu. And then, you akan guna formula E equal mc squared, okay? Which is energy is related to mass times the speed of light squared, okay? But first of all, just now your mass is in amu. You have to convert to kg first, okay? So mass, um... Mass, you have to convert to kg first. Okay, so we see at this example. So you'll find your mass defect is 0 0.519 amu. You have to times the k, uh, times the uh, the value to get kg. The past two, you times the speed, speed of light square, square, square to get, to your, get your energy. energy. Okay, so we know that uh, speed of light, speed is ms negative 1. Okay, you square it, this one is kg. When you square it, you get kg m square as negative 2. So this is equivalent to the unit of um, work or energy, joule. Lah. So in simple terms, this is joule. And that is where we get the energy from this formula. Can you understand this? E equals mc square. Why no one give me a response? I know I'm not lagging. Good, huh? Okay, do give your response so that I understand. If not, I'll go further on, further on, then later you don't understand, then it's not good. So basically, you see, nuclear physics actually is already like, we're going to finish the chapter. It's quite an easy chapter in physics. You have to score here. And then quantum physics also, you have to score there because these two chapters are very easy and it cannot ask you too much beyond the syllabus because all this is just in your syllabus. So you have to score in nuclear physics and quantum physics. These two are the easiest chapter in Form 5. Okay? Now, uh, so basically, the steps is always calculate the mass defect, convert to kg, and then times use the formula, get the energy. Lah. Okay? So it's relatively easy. Lah. Okay, so basically now we just have to know the process. You can read textbook of how they produce nuclear energy. So, nuclear fusion happens in this reactor. Okay, but remember, whenever we want to produce energy, we will always use the steam. Steam is the most important thing to generate the energy in whatever ways, like nuclear energy, nuclear reactor, it will produce steam to produce energy. Biomass, also steam. What else? Huh? Uh, uh, let me think. Not hydro. Hydro it uses water. It doesn't use steam. Um, what other methods can you think of? Huh? Alternative form of energy production. Uh, energy... Solar doesn't use steam. Hydro. Hmm. Let me let me think. Let me search it. I forgot already. What uses steam? 
energy A geothermal, geothermal uses um, the steam to produce uh, energy. La. So all this, even, even your fuel, your fossil fuel, is just to burn, right? So when you burn, it will pro you burn the, you heat the water, it will boil, it will produce steam. And then steam will generate the energy. So let's see, how does steam generate the energy? So the steam, the boiling of the water produces high pressure steam. And then the steam will rotate the turbine to produce uh, energy. And then the steam will condense into water and then the cycle repeat and repeat again. So electrical energy is sent to consumer via sub, uh, power supply transmission system. Okay. Okay, chain reaction we talked about already. Okay, this one. Uh, maybe paper two will ask you for this part. This is the modification. Lah. Okay. So this is nuclear reactor. Now, who here doesn't know how to do paper two modification question? Modification or comparing? Uh, I think this one more to modification. Lah. Okay, let me wrap first. Who doesn't know how to do modification? Questions. Your modification will be in um normally will be in uh, part B or part C of your paper, uh, section B or section C. I in our in our previous exam modification also came out a few times in our trial paper. I memorized the list teacher said, yeah, correct lah, but do you know how to answer or not? Do you know like what is the proper method? Because some people you don't know how to answer. You just like write one essay like that, and it's actually not the right method, lah. Do table, yeah, correct. Do table. Okay, it means others. What problem? I don't know why the blue marker seems to be easier to erase compared to the black. Okay. Okay, so modification questions. Okay. Modification. Okay. Normally, they give you one diagram uh, over here, one diagram. They will ask you to explain the following aspect. So now we are talking about nuclear physics. We will focus on this few aspects. Uh. Okay, control rod. Okay, what's the next aspect? Uh? Moderator. Uranium rod. Okay. Um, uh, Okay, wall, wall, cooling agent. So you have to suggest modification for this nuclear reactor. Now, always look at the mark. Normally, if five expects, they will give you 10 marks, okay? At the bottom here, they will give you 10 marks. Okay. Now, how do you answer? What you must do is, you draw a table, two columns, the row, one row is one row is used for one modification. So because you have two columns. Okay. One, two, three, four. Five, one, two, three, four, five. Actually, we need one more for the like the title like that. Nah. Okay. Two columns. Okay. So that means one modification, one reason. One modification, one reason, total, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You get your ten marks. Huh? So the first one here, you can write anything. Like you can write modification or suggestion. Okay, here you can write reason or explanation. Up to you. Just choose one. Huh? This one is not important, but this is just a header for your columns. Then you focus on the first one. Control rod. What you want to do to the control rod to modify it? So the textbook say you can 
um, boron or cadmium. Okay, so you can say okay, boron control rock or control rock made of boron. Explain why. Look here, controls the reaction rate by absorbing excess neutrons. So you can say okay, control whatever. Okay, absorb uh, whatever lah. Okay, understand? Second one, moderator. Tengok moderator apa? Materials such as graphite or water. You can see lah. Graphite, moderator. What is the reason you choose graphite? Slows down. Uh, okay, so you can say slows down. Uh, slows down, etc. So far, do you understand a lot? Do you understand what I'm trying to explain here? Yes, huh? Okay. Then, what is your third modification? Uranium rod. Uranium rod. So, basically, you can just say like, um, okay, uranium rod. Lah. Okay. And then, what is the function? Uranium rod. Okay. Use as fuel for producing nuclear energy. Ah, okay, you can say like, fuel, whatever. Okay. Wall. Thick concrete wall. What to do? What is the function? Prevent radioactive from leaking. Okay, prevent leaking maybe. Okay. Then your next one, water as cooling agent. Water, okay, as uh, blah, blah, blah. and then what to do? You can say absorb lah. Absorb heat energy. Absorb heat. Okay. Okay. Your reason doesn't have to 100% follow the same. As long as your reason is correct, okay? As long as your reason is logical or you use your physics knowledge, normally we accept your reason. The main thing we'll look at is your modification first. Your modification, betul, one mark. Reason, betul, one mark. Then you get two marks. Modification, salah. Reason, automatically, salah. Okay? So this is how you get marks in modification question. So, kalau ini betul, betul. Salah, salah. Understand? If ni betul, tapi ini salah, then you get one mark only lah. You understand? So, this is how you get 10 marks. When you see 10 marks, confirm there will be 5 aspects. And then, each aspect explain the reason. So, you get 10 cells lah. You understand? Do you understand? Yes, ah. Others? I hope you understand. Others so quiet. Abina. Renjin. Who else? Jashen. Junyen. Come on, Rian. Okay. Okay. Uh? okay, okay, good. So basically, the next one is just that you have to read lah. Nuclear energy, is it good or bad lah? Ah, that's all. Okay. So that's the end of chapter 6. I hope you understand. Anyone has any question for chapter 6 before we move on to quantum physics? Mass effect. It's not mass effect. It's mass defect. Defect. D-E-F-E-C-T. Basically, it's before fission. Your mass will be larger, right? But after fission, it will be smaller. For example, before fission, 2 kg. After fission, 1.5 kg. And then you release energy. So, 0 0.5 kg missing will go here lah, to the energy. 0 0.5 kg over here. Understand? So this is mass defect lah. And then energy we we'll use E equals to mc squared lah. 0 0.5 times 3 times 10 to the power of 8 squared. Okay? So this is how you calculate your energy loss. Hmm. Okay. Discrete energy packet. Satu packet, satu packet, satu packet. Okay? So uh, photon is directly proportional to the frequency of light wave. Okay, so before I for go on further, I hope you all know this. In physics or whatever mathematics, you, in, you like tomorrow is modern mathematics. I also explain about variation. You have your y and your x. When we say y is directly proportional to x, we will use y alpha x. Kan? Betul kan? Okay, but to form an equation, untuk letak equal di sini, 
you have to introduce a constant dalam sini. You kena masuk satu constant. Macam contohnya K. Baru you boleh equal. Understand? Tak ada K ni, tak ada constant ini, you tak boleh tulis equal. Because Y is not equal to X. But Y, after putting a constant, you can equal to X. Do you understand or not? This one is everything in physics lah. For example, uh, S equals to, uh, sorry, uh, let me think of something. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Uh, v equals to, uh, V is directly proportional to lambda. V equals to F lambda. Uh, understand? So F is the constant similar frequency. What else? Uh? Hmm. Any more idea? F equals to uh, M E F. M F. F equals to M A A. Acceleration is directly proportional to inversely proportional. Okay, acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. Okay. So, um, F equals to MA. See, I should write like this. So, A equals to F over M. F is your constant. Understand? Do you understand this concept or not? Kalau dia variation, you have to put satu constant, baru you boleh letak equal. Understand? So, the same thing over here. In this chapter, same thing. Just now we write energy directly proportional to frequency. So, how energy equals to Planck constant HF. E equals to HF. Satu Planck constant yang discover oleh Planck. Ingat tak tadi? Huh? It discover oleh Planck. Okay? But this F, we also know that, okay, V equals to F lambda. V equals to F lambda. F is also equals to V over lambda. And quantum of energy ni focusing on light. Quantum physics is focusing on light. So speed of light is what? C. C over lambda. So frequency kita pun tahu F equals to C over lambda. E equals to HF. Second formula, E equals to HC over lambda. Can you understand? Okay, if they give you frequency, guna in formula ini. Dia tak bagi you frequency, dia bagi you wavelength, guna formula ini. Okay, C is always a constant. C is always speed of light 3 times 10 to the power of 8. Okay, H is also a constant. Okay, apa tu plan constant lah, lupa lah. Okay, 6.63 times 10 to the power of negative 34. Okay, can I? Faham ah? Okay, good. Now kita baru solve the question. Actually easy. You understand these two formula? Ah, you can solve anything. Oh, what is this? Okay, 400 nanometer, 750 nanometer, compact energy. So it, they give you frequent. Uh, sorry, they give you wavelength. You have to use the formula H C over lambda lah. So you use the formula E equals H C over lambda. So you see. Frequency for uh, sorry wavelength four hundred nanometer. Okay, kalau wavelength dia lebih, you see the four hundred nanometer and seven hundred fifty nanometer. Wavelength dia rendah, wavelength dia tinggi. Okay, because the wavelength rendah, frequency akan tinggi atau rendah frequency. Wavelength rendah frequency. Tinggi, bagus. Inversely proportional. Remember, uh, uh, lambda is this one, one over f. Okay. Okay. So this one tinggi, ini rendah. Energy E is directly proportional to f. So energy tinggi atau rendah? Tinggi also good. Then sini rendah. Then you see, you calculate already, you see, the energy 4.97 times 10 to the power of negative 9 
E2 is 2.65 and 10 to the power negative 9. So for the longer wavelength, the energy is lower. High, shorter wavelength, energy is higher because of the frequency. Can you understand? Higher frequency, higher energy. Lower wavelength, higher frequency, higher energy. Higher wave, longer wavelength, lower frequency, lower energy. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, now, okay, this one momentum is not really, they won't really test you. Lah. So basically, lambda equals to H over P and then momentum, momentum, you learned already in last year from 4 chapter 2 is momentum equals to MV lah. Okay, so you can substitute uh, lambda equals to H over P, lambda equals to H over MV. MV. But normally questions, they won't ask about this momentum. Lah. I rarely see questions like that. Okay? Okay, so this one is just the electron microscope. Lah, I think. Ah, okay, lah, all this is that one. Okay, now we know that energy E equals to HF. If they want power, basically you put an N here. What is N? N is the number of particles. Satu particle. Ini untuk satu particle. Ini untuk n particles. Okay. When I times this, when I times the n, I will get the power. Lah. Okay. Okay. Ah. Understand? Ah. Very easy. You need power. Just add the n over there. Okay. So solving problems. 50 watt lamp emits red light with wavelength. They bagi you wavelength. So, they bagi you power, they bagi you wavelength. So, you know you have to use formula P equals to NHC over lambda. Lah. Then you get your N is what term 2. Understand? Can you understand? Do you understand this subtopic? We have already reached the end of 7.1. Can you understand this? The entire subtopic, the most important is you have to know this formula only. Light energy. Momentum is only the uh, De Broglie wavelength is basically referring to the light punya wavelength lah. Tapi um, itu kita normally tak buat calculation lah. Okay. Itu normally kita tak buat calculation. You just have to understand the formula. Lambda equals to H over P. Lambda H over MB. Okay. Before I move to the photoelectric e effect uh, discovered by Einstein, do you have any questions? So you see, uh, Einstein actually contributed a lot to quantum physics besides discovering the photon, dear put what me photoelectric effect. So, okay. Photoelectric effect. Okay. Photoelectric effect, basically, means that satu metal surface, metal lah, I shine light on it, dia akan release banyak electron. Itu je. In simple terms. So, take one metal, you shine light at it, electron can release. But you cannot see electron now, of course, because your electron so small. You understand? In simple terms, it is such a photoelectric effect. Okay, later on, the next subtopic, we will learn about the equation, but this is the basic concept. Okay. Solar power. Yeah, basically, solar power also uses that concept. Lah. So you have to see, what are the characteristics of this photoelectric effect? When a light-sensitive metal surface cathode is illuminated with certain light beam, electron will be emitted from metal surface. Okay, this electron, because they light can, sebenarnya dia dipanggil photoelectron. Okay, photoelectron attracted to the anode. Okay, movement of photoelectron from the cathode to the anode produces a current. Lah. Okay, tapi sini ingat, light to Dalam quantum physics, is it wave or photon? Light in quantum physics. Photon, okay? So, photon will illuminate metal. Metal will release photoelectron. Jangan confuse kedua-dua ini. 
photon masuk, foto elektron keluar. Okay? Light will come in, discrete energy packet, if photo electron will release. Okay? Okay. Now, uh, okay, ni tak payah. Okay. Photoelectric effect occurs when light strikes the surface of a metal. The electrons in the metal absorb energy from the light and escape from the metal surface. According to classical theory, light in wavelength spectrum continuous. Okay, should be occur at any light frequency. Bright light have energy. Okay, so previously, before this photoelectric effect, the, we all think classical theory. Kalau saya shine bright light, dia boleh emit banyak elektron because higher energy lah white light. Lower energy, uh, dim light will not emit so much photoelectron. However, Einstein discover ini salah. Sebenarnya, saya kena apply the light wave at a certain frequency so that dia boleh emit photoelectron. Okay? So, these are the characteristic of photoelectric effect. Okay? First one. Sama saja. Energy directly proportional to frequency. Higher frequency, higher energy. Okay? Okay, which is kinetic energy lah. Second characteristic. Minimum frequency is called the threshold frequency. I my my light ray has to exceed the threshold frequency so that electrons can escape. If saya punya light punya frequency is less than threshold frequency, photoelectric effect tak boleh. Can you understand? Threshold frequency. Yes, they'll give the threshold frequency. Okay, can I? Okay, the third one. Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy does not depend on the intensity. Maksudnya, kalau saya shine bright light, if I shine a bright light onto the metal surface, the electron will release with the energy. If I shine a dim light, frequency dia sama. Frequency dia sama, ya. Brightness tak sama. Dia kinetic energy akan sama amount. So, walaupun bright or dim, if frequency is correct, the energy will be the same. Can you understand? So, the energy only depends on the frequency, not the intensity. Don't care bright or dim, as long as you shine the light with the correct frequency, the energy will be released. Okay, and the fourth characteristic is instantaneous. What does instantaneous mean? Instantaneous means immediately. Thermionic emission, it needs time. But this one is immediately. I shine one light on the metal surface, straight away, electron release. Okay? So, threshold frequency, minimum frequency required to produce photoelectric effect on metal. Habis. 7.2 is just this basic concept subject. 7.3, yang you kena calculate. Can you understand? Photoelectric effect, do you understand? Easy or not? Photoelectric effect. Is it easy? Yeah, I told you it's easy. It's just like this. Satu metal, you shine the light, release electron, that's all. Okay? Okay. Okay, let's go to 7.3 calculation. The others, why not replying? I'm so afraid, you know, you tak faham. Okay, so basically, photoelectron effect, photon energy. Okay. Okay, we know that the energy, the equation is like this. Huh? Energy equals to minimum energy release and also the kinetic energy. Okay. So, this is the metal surface. 
the energy, the light energy coming like this, okay, I can release kinetic energy. Okay. The W akan guna di sini. Work function akan di sini. Nanti kita akan tengok apa tu work function. Tapi the kinetic energy will release by the photoelectron. Nah? Okay. So, E equals to HF. For work function maintain. Plus, kinetic energy formula half mv square. Okay. So, kinetic energy equals to energy minus work function. Okay. Half mv square equals to hf minus w. Half mv square equals to hf minus fo. Okay. Actually, I should do hf minus hfo h F minus F. Ah, okay. Now, what is work? Oh, toilet. Ah. Okay, now I continue. What is work function? Work function means the minimum energy required to produce photoelectric effect. Okay. Threshold frequency. Is minimum frequency work function minimum energy okay threshold frequency is the frequency work function is the energy frequency macam mana pergi energy remember e equals to hf so if this is the minimum frequency to get the minimum energy it times the crank constant lah. understand that's why work function hfo do you understand this or not Can you understand? Yes, good. Okay, Eunice. Hmm. You want to wait for Eunice? I takut nanti she come back. She confused. Do you want to wait or you want to, want to continue? This part understand lah, photoelectric equation. You understand the equation, right? Energy is a work function plus kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy is the energy minus the work function lah. Okay? So, threshold frequency, minimum frequency to produce photoelectric effect. Work function, minimum energy. To, from the frequency, how to get the energy? Times H lah. Okay? Times the Planck constant. Okay, so because E equals to HF, higher frequency, higher energy. If the minimum frequency, the minimum threshold function frequency increases, work function pun increase. Okay, kalau threshold frequency dia pa, uh, lagi banyak, work function tu lagi banyak lah. Okay, so you see here, metal A, frequency is less. Metal B, more frequency. C is higher frequency. So the work function for uh, metal C is also highest. Lah. Uh, okay. So this, all this metal, they have different threshold frequency. So work function, you just times the Planck constant, you'll get the work function for each metal. Lah. Okay. So this is the threshold frequency. Okay. Okay, shall we continue with calculation? Blue light frequency 6.67 times 10 to the power 40. Okay. Now, what is maximum kinetic energy? Okay. They give you frequency already. You know you can find the, uh, the energy. This, from here, you can find the energy. Okay. So, you have to minus the work function. Kinetic energy is energy minus work function. 
Uh, to get energy, E equals HF, frequency times strength constant, you get this one, minus the work function, then you get kinetic energy. Can you understand? I'm sorry, you know, you're all not replying. Please uh, ask questions, huh? Okay, uh. oh, Eunice is back. Eunice, do you understand all this or not? Do you understand how to get the equation? Good, okay, good. Okay, actually nothing much really. Lah. Okay, here they give you the threshold frequency and calculate the work function, okay? So from the graph, you think, oh, lah, threshold frequency to upper. Threshold frequency is 5.6, lah, times 10 to the power 14. How to get work function from threshold frequency times the h lah, then constant. So this is your work function. Minimum energy and minimum frequency needed to produce photoelectric effect. Okay, this one also the same thing lah, is the same thing. Ah, okay, so you see. Uh, okay. So like I said just now, longer wavelength, frequency is lower, kinetic energy is uh, not kinetic energy, sorry. Uh, work function is also lower. Okay? Blue light, higher, uh, lower wavelength, higher frequency, higher energy, higher work function. Okay? Example 4. Example, f this one actually is nothing much. It's just saying that uh, the work function you look, okay? You see, cesium and lithium. Cesium work function lower, lithium higher. Threshold frequency lower, threshold frequency into lithium higher. So maximum wavelength, because your frequency is lower, your wavelength can be higher. But if your frequency is higher, your wavelength have to be lower. Do you understand? So it's all related. Energy is related to frequency, related to the wavelength, or this one. Okay, so okay, photoelectric application you can read yourself like LED lamps, la, solar panel, la, light detector, or this image sensor, ISS International Space Station. That's all for chapter 7. Can you understand? Chapter 7 is very easy, la, right? Or it's related. What's with the CCM meeting? Okay, I repeat. Cesium lithium basically is just in this cell. Kalau saya guna cesium and I use lithium, cesium the metal, the work function is lower, the frequency is threshold frequency lower. Lithium has a higher work function, higher threshold frequency. When the frequency is lower, wavelength is higher. Frequency higher, wavelength lower. Can you understand? Yeah, it's just the same concept. Lah. Any more questions, everyone? Mm -hmm. Anyone got any question? Now you, we have a lot of time. Huh? You can ask questions if you don't. Then please ask. Need to learn how to sketch graph of kinetic energy? No, la, you don't have to sketch graph. La. Okay, normally graph is given. Even if you have to sketch graph, it's very easy. Only, ma. The axis macam like 2. From here, this is the, the threshold frequency. Macam ni. Atas saja. Pergi atas. Okay? From the threshold frequency. Okay, any more question? Do you understand or not? Shen Qing, Abrina, Sabrina, Jia Xuan, Jun Yan, Yu Yan. Do you understand? It's actually very easy. Quantum physics. You understand already, right? Quantum physics, okay? Photoelectric effect. 
Sabrina, please. I'm most worried for you, you know. You're not replying. A bunch of formula. No, right? it's actually just one formula you derive from it. You just have to know two formula. E equals to HF. Then, and this one, E equals to W plus KE. Photoelectric effect. Energy equals to W plus kinetic energy. And then, yes, you have to derive. It's just related. Nah. E equals to HF. You know F is C over lambda. So you substitute only, substitute only. Everything substitute. Okay. Hey, hello. This derive is just a... What I mean derive is just to get the formula. Kita tak masuk differentiation lah. Ayo. Not intimidating. The question, they will only, they will give you a few. If they, they will only ask you to find an energy, frequency, wavelength, they will give you a few information and then you have to find the other information. Not, not intimidating lah. Understand? They will give you energy and then maybe ask you to calculate wavelength, for example. Okay? Hmm. Sabrina, yang differentiation to what day? Ah? Is it? At max is Friday, right? Ah, this Friday. Not scary one. Lah. Okay, okay, do you understand, understand? Quantum, quantum physics? physics? This is this just, is just very, very big, big quantum, quantum physics, physics line, line or level. Or level. Any more questions? Okay, please remember to fill in this Google form. So to give your feedback and also attendance. Okay. Thanks for your rating, your suggestion, everything. Lah. Yeah, good luck. I hope it's clear. Lah. Any more questions? If not, I think we can end the class. Ah. Yeah, 4 o'clock, so nice. 2 hours. Okay. Uh. Nothing else, right? Okay, then I shall end the recording. So, thank you everyone for joining this class. If you have any question, please uh, feel free to ask me. Okay? I'll end the recording here.